Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I wanted to talk about something that I get asked about a lot on Instagram. The amount of DMs that I get about this subject is very overwhelming and I wanted to create this video as a resource for everyone that wants to know more about blastocystis hominis. Now, what that is, in a nutshell, is a parasite. Delicious, I know. <laughs> Parasites, they get a bad rap. And I mean, for good reason, right? Like, no one wants to talk about these buggers. They're disgusting to think about. To think about the fact that they're inside of us, taking up residence, taking our nutrients, taking over our bodies is really scary. So I wanted to talk about my own experience with blasto, um, the symptoms that I had leading up to finding out that I had blasto, how I found out that I had it, uh, what I did to treat it, uh, the tests that I took, and how I am right now. So let's start from the beginning. It was November of 2017 when I started to get symptoms. Now these symptoms were a variety of things and things that could be linked to many other types of uh, digestive disorders or autoimmune issues. Um, so I wasn't sure at the time what exactly it was, but I did know that there was something going on inside of me that I needed to figure out. So some of the symptoms I was experiencing were food cravings, especially, especially for sugar. Man, the, the sugar cravings were just out of control, I can tell you that. Joint pain, crazy fatigue where I couldn't get out of bed um, or if I had gotten out of bed I would go back to bed like in the afternoon because I was just so drained of energy. Food sensitivities, bloating, like after a meal I would look like seven months pregnant. No joke. And it wasn't even a heavy meal. Even after an apple my stomach would blow up. And I would also have food sensitivities to the point where I would feel inflamed afterwards so the next day I would wake up and my whole body just felt like I'd had an entire bottle of, of alcohol to myself the night before. This kind of like hangover feeling, really sluggish um, in the head as well. And on top of that, if I ever did drink alcohol, for example, half a glass of wine, I would have a crazy hangover the next day, like crazy throughout my whole body just felt absolutely dead. So it wasn't until my birthday, um, it was February of 2018. It was my birthday and on my birthday I felt like shit. I felt like absolute shit. I had no energy. I spent half the day on the couch. Um, the other half I tried to go outside and enjoy the day. My husband took me on a hike but I was just really struggling like mentally and physically that day. We had dinner plans that day we went to Crossroads which is a vegan restaurant in LA and I couldn't eat anything. Reason being um, during the last four months I had gotten a test with Penetest where they test the antibodies, it's an IgG test, they test the antibodies um, of your blood and they can tell you what you're reacting to in terms of food. So on that test, I had pinto beans, peanuts, cashews, and garlic as highly inflammatory foods for me. So I couldn't eat those foods at the time. When going to Crossroads, their entire menu was vegan. Everything had garlic in it or cashew because, you know, that's like the alternative to dairy, I guess, is like cashew cheese. Um, so I couldn't eat anything. And... That aside, I had horrible stomach pains, like bend over, really horrible stabbing pains in my stomach. That was the lowest point for me, and that was when I knew that I had to address this and figure out exactly what was going wrong, going on in my stomach. So the next day, I decided to take it to the IG stories and tell everyone what was going on. At the time I was vegan, my entire IG was vegan, and my blog was vegan. So it was really um, scary, to say the least, to open up and say that I was going to start eating meat because I knew at that point mm, the vegan diet just wasn't working for me. I was getting bloated by beans and legumes and grains and I wanted to really work on myself and work on my gut. 
So I decided right then and there, I was going to start incorporating bone broth, collagen, and go on a paleo diet. Now, everyone was very supportive and that was great. And that's why I love my community because they just wanted me to be healthy and happy. And whatever avenue I had to take to do that, they were going to support me for that. So what I did was started a candida diet, um, which included no starchy vegetables, no coffee, very minimal uh, cold or raw foods, no fermented foods, and no sugar. I felt great uh, during that cleanse, but as soon as I finished it, a month later, straight back to the symptoms, back to feeling like shit. So during the few months that I decided to go paleo, I was looking up and doing my own research about the gut, and I did have a sneaking suspicion that I did have a parasite. Uh, it was this kind of, I guess, gut feeling that there was something that was almost controlling my appetite. It was controlling my cravings, controlling my brain, and it sounds so crazy to think or say, but that's really what I felt. And I came across this company called Viome. Now, I, I found them on a, a podcast, and it was almost like this, this was what I was meant to find. I was so excited about the concept of this company and just knew right then and there I had to get tested with them. The way Biom works is they send you an at-home gut test. You poop into a little vial, you send it back, they analyze that for all the bacteria that is in your gut and they give you a list of all the bacteria that is in your gut and then they give you food recommendations based off of that to get your gut into tip-top shape. So they send you a list of foods to avoid, they send you a list of foods to eat a little bit of, they send you a list of foods to eat moderately, and then to like eat a ton of, as in your, your superfoods. So I, I took the test in March. I got my results in April. Lo and behold, right there and then, I saw I had blastocystis hominis. It came up at 99% activity. So at that time, they've changed it now, but at that time they tell you what percentage activity each of these um, microbes or bacteria or viruses uh, were at. So the fact that it was at 99% was just like mind blowing to me and you know, doing my own research afterwards, looking up blastocystis, I was immediately freaked out by the concept that I actually had a parasite. But at the same time, I was relieved that I had an answer to all of my gut issues because I thought, to be honest, like I was going crazy. I was trying all these diets and nothing was really working. I was eating healthy and I just still felt like shit. So knowing that I had a parasite and knowing that I could do something about it was very empowering. And me being me, I learned everything that I could about it. So before I get into the way that I treated it, I want to talk about the parasite itself because it's actually one of the most common parasites in the world and to contract it, you don't have to go to like a third world country and, and drink some dodgy water. The way that blastocystis hominis works, it, it can survive out of water and without a host. So ways that you can contract blasto through not properly washed fruits and vegetables, the, the dirt, so like playing in the dirt, or like being like barefoot in the dirt, and actually parasites can actually go through the soles of your feet, believe it or not. Uh, you can get them from cats or dogs, or you can get them through fecal matter. So say for example, you go out to a restaurant and you order a salad, and the person that is preparing your salad went to the bathroom, it was number two, they didn't wash their hands properly and then they didn't use the correct measures when preparing your salad to make sure everything was hygienic. So then you eat that and you've contracted it. That's an it in a nutshell. So the thing that people don't know is, is blasto is the, one of the most common uh, parasites in the world, but also one of the hardest to get rid of. In addition to that, there's not that much information about it on the internet, which is just mind-blowing to me. 
when I googled it, there was one website um, that had like a little bit of information, but not that much. But then I found this YouTube of a naturopath in New Zealand, believe it or not. I'm from New Zealand, so represent. <laughs> um, his name was Eric Backer. He actually talks a lot about Blasto on his YouTube channel. I can link it below. Um, he was the only real resource that I could find to really dive deep into Blasto and find out how to get rid of it and how to manage it. He actually formulated a supplement called Canzita. Uh, this is it here. If you can see that. Now, although on the bottle it says balance, it's made to balance Candida levels, the thing with Blasto is that it can actually cause Candida. So they kind of go hand in hand um, because it feeds off of sugar. Um, you, it's like a kind of like a byproduct of having Blasto is also having Candida. Now, I bought this off the website, but you can get it on Amazon as well. It's not cheap, but in my opinion, it was the most effective part of my treatment. Now, what's important to note with this is these things are very strong. So I started off with half and then worked my way up to two um, per day. You can have very full on die off effects depending on how active uh, the blasto is. Um, I experienced some crazy die-off effects, including fatigue, brain fog, nausea, um, just feeling like I was detoxing, you know, that kind of just really sluggish, heavy feeling, um, sweating a lot as well. I really made a point when I was doing the treatment uh, to go to colonics, just to really help um, eliminate all of the, the dead waste that was um, happening from the die-off from taking the Kenzita. So what I did was one month of Kenzita and then I stopped for a little bit. I stopped and then I also did a bone broth cleanse. I continued to be um, as low grain as possible, avoided alcohol because alcohol turns to sugar and blasto feeds off sugar and then avoiding uh, refined sugar as much as possible. I then went to the doctor um, in July to get a checkup and I asked her at the time of my checkup for a parasite test. I had to explain to her that I had been tested positive for, for a parasite in the past and I wanted to see if I still had it. Uh, so she reluctantly let me take a parasite test. Um, a week later they called me and said you have been tested positive for blastocystis hominis. Mind you, the woman that was telling me these results didn't even know how to pronounce it. And I had to correct her when she was telling me what I had. And she was trying to tell me that the only way to treat it was through antibiotics. And that that was the only way. She wasn't going to hear anything else about it and she wanted to prescribe me those antibiotics. I said, thanks but no thanks. I will continue my uh, holistic approach and if I need you, I'll let you know. So after that news, although I was a little disheartened, I decided to go back to the Kenzita and do two separate rounds of that for a month each, uh, taking a few weeks off in between. So I did that. Uh, I did a another, uh, it was called the Al Venus Cleanse. It was predominantly bone broth, but then also some um, nutrient dense smoothies as well. So at this point, I decide to get another biome test to see where my gut is at um, in a hole and then also see if blasto is still present. I took the test, my results came back, my gut health had improved vastly, my gut inflammation had gone down a ton. What's really great is I could tolerate garlic again which if you knew how much I would react to garlic, then this was like the biggest feat on its own because just a tiny bit of garlic would like make my stomach blow up. Now I put it in my food every night. In terms of the parasite, it was still noted as being there. Um, however, my symptoms were a lot less. So I knew that the activity of it was a lot less. So I at least knew that I'd gotten rid of like a big chunk of it. So going back to the drawing board, I took another round of Kanzita, 
Along with that, I know you guys have probably heard about it, but celery juice is really good for, um, it has really great antiparasitic effects and was really good at flushing out my system. So I jumped on the celery juice train, I did another bone broth cleanse and continued the candida. Now, I was tested again for the last time in March of this year, 2019. I went to my physician and they took a full panel of my gut for parasites and they said that it came back squeaky clean. So as of now, that is the result. I will plan on doing another Viome test just to double check. I like to cross reference these results just in case, but as it stands, my symptoms are pretty much gone. Like I still get bloated here and there like every other person. <laughs> Um, but in terms of my energy levels, the fatigue, the brain fog, everything that came with this parasite, that it has vastly improved and I feel like my old self again. So I just wanted to create this video just to let you guys know there is hope. Um, I know that Blasto has a rap for not being able to get rid of it at all, but there is proof in the pudding. Just gotta do your research and be persistent and just be really diligent with your diet and added sugar and alcohol and all that stuff. I can't suggest Kenzita highly enough. Um, this isn't sponsored. I'm not like commissioned by them at all. Um, I'm just a, a user and a believer in that product. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. If you guys have any questions, please like, leave them below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe so that I know to create more like this. Um, if you guys want to check me out on Instagram, send me a DM, say hi. Um, my Insta is at peanut.head. Um, but thanks guys and I'll see you in the next vid. <laughs>